Hey guys and welcome to another TTK tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at styles in TTK. So styles. Styles are a really big part of TTK and actually kind of underrated. I mean when you think of TTK what do you generally think of? You think of the new widgets right? The new widgets, the new look and everything. But what people don't realize that the main part of TTK is actually the styles and themes. Okay. And that's actually what TTK stands for. Have you ever wondered what TTK actually stands for? Well, the TK in TTK over here, this stands for take inter. The T over here stands for themed. It stands for themed take inter. That's what TTK stands for because it brings in theming and styling support. Okay. And we're going to be talking about this, about, uh, you know, the theme part in today's video and in the next video that we release. Okay. This video will cover styles, how to create them, how to modify them and all about default styles, custom styles, etc. And in the next video, we'll take a look at themes, what they are, how to make your own themes, how to use the pre-built themes already available there, etc. etc. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. All I'll tell you for now is that styles are a really powerful tool and given enough time and investment, you can turn them into something really, really great. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, the first thing that we do is create our style object. Okay, tdk.style. Using this style object, we can now uh, basically adjust the styles that are used in our take window. Okay, any changes that we make using this thing will basically be reflected across the entire window, all widgets. So before we proceed any further, I want to create a simple button. Okay, we're going to be using this button as our test subject basically and changing its style and creating new styles for it. Okay, so if I do this, master, sorry, put, the, put that into frame, then give it some text, which is something like click me and there we go okay we don't need to bind it to anything because we're not actually concerned with that and done there's our button great now i'll just give it some extra vertical padding so it appears a bit in the center okay better now what i want to do is change the look of this button if you take a look at it currently it already actually has a style applied on it if i move my cursor over it it turns blue and it has this, you know, this look, okay, that's a font. There's a font in there and that's something that's being predefined, okay. This button here actually has a default style and that style has a name. It's called T button. This is the style name and this parameter exists by default and this is the default value, T button. And if I print this out, sorry, if I just run this code, you'll see that it remains unchanged because this is the default value, T button. T stands for themed by the way, so it's like themed button, okay? Now, this is the default style and it has a bunch of settings already applied on it. But what if I want to make my own style, okay? Now, what you could do is just change the button okay you could change the widget and change the font size change the font type and stuff i think this should work it works on take inter so i think it might work on ttk as well so if i do something like verdana and 12 what happens does it work all right it doesn't it doesn't which is also a very good point because this would actually work i think in take inter let's see what happens there there we go it works it works in take inter but it won't work in TTK. And the reason for that is because TTK actually uh, forbids all of these options. It forbids all these customization options. You can't do BG anymore and change the background. That's not allowed in TTK because TTK says anything that you want to do regarding the look, regarding the style, you need to use our style system, okay? Which is something that TTK sets out to do. It, it sets out to basically separate the boundary between the widget and the styles. Okay, so you deal with, with the styles separately, you configure the style, then you just apply it on the widget in the end, and voila. Okay, the benefit of this system is that we get to create a style and then we can go ahead and apply it on as many widgets as we want to. We don't need to individually configure each widget. Okay, which is pretty great. Like instead of coming up with 10 different uh, like having to write the same code 10 times, you just need to make one or two styles or maybe two or three 
depending on how many different types of buttons you have, and then just apply those styles. That's a pretty great solution. So enough talking, let's just go ahead and make our first style. Okay, we'll call it custom.style, sorry, custom.tbutton. And this is a rather important naming convention to follow. Okay, custom, which is the name. Okay, this can be anything. This part can be anything like heading or special or whatever. Okay, but this part should remain constant. The dot and then the name of the original style. Okay, make sure that's there. Now, what we'll do here is actually configure a style. All right, so the first parameter that configure takes is the name of the style. And this is actually where I need to mention that configure, it doesn't just, you know, create styles. It's used to both create and modify styles. So you can use it to create a new style in the sense that if you give it a name that doesn't already exist, then it'll create a new style with that name. And if you give it a name that already exists, it'll change that style, okay? It'll modify it. So it just depends on whether the style exists or not, okay? So the first parameter was this, okay? And honestly, I should have done this step first because I'm kind of doing it in reverse. I gave it the style first and then I created it up here. That's okay though. Now, the first parameter is the name of the style. The second parameter and onwards, all that is optional. Okay, you can pass in any number of parameters, you can, you know, change pretty much anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do is change the foreground. Okay, you pass in options into these, uh, you know, into the style. So what's the foreground option? Foreground is the text, the color of the text. So I'm going to make it red. Okay, what else can we change? We can change padding internal padding okay we can either give it a single value in which, in which case it'll apply that to all sides or we could be a little specific and we could do this okay it's a kind of an advanced method of you know applying padding okay it's like top left bottom right i get i get a little confused in which one's which but with some trial and error you can figure that out okay so what else is there there's padding, foreground, and then there's font. Okay, we can change the font. Like, we can make it Verdana 12 and underline. Okay, and watch the magic. And there we go. 10 padding has been applied on both the left and the right. And the color of the text is now red. And it's now underlined. That's pretty cool. And we've changed it to the font Verdana. And we can change the font size a bit as well to like 18. So there we go, a much larger button. Now the interesting thing is that we can just take this and no matter how many buttons we create and just apply the style, they, they will all look the same. Okay, they all have the same style applied on them, which is pretty cool. Because you know, we can, we can just change their text as well and that's no problem because the style is there. All right, pretty cool. So that's basically what styling is, creating your own styles. Let's just take a look at one more example, okay? And one more thing I should mention actually, before we move on, is that we can actually modify the default style itself, okay? So I can actually modify T button, which is pretty interesting. Now, watch this. I'm gonna create this new button here call, called uh, second button. I'm just gonna increase the size of the window a bit. Now, I'm gonna create two buttons, okay? Now, one of them will have the style mentioned, okay? And one of them doesn't, okay? And remember, we're modifying the default style here, okay? So if I run this code, guess what? Both of them have the styling applied on them. Okay, even though only one of them had it mentioned, and that's because it's a default style. So it's applied by default. And this is also why this is a bit dangerous, okay? Modifying the default style uh, directly is a bit dangerous because any widget that you create is gonna you know, have that style applied on it by default. So you might wanna be a bit careful, and this is why we create custom styles, okay? So just bear that in mind. One function you might find in handy is the style.lookup option. Basically what it does is it gives you the current value for an option 
in a style, okay, which is kind of handy. So let me just demonstrate this real quick. I'll just remove all this unnecessary stuff. And there we go. All right. So I'm going to print out style.lookup. Okay. The lookup function takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of style, T button. And the second parameter is the name of the option. Okay. Which in this case is font. I just want to find out the current value for the option font. Okay. And I'll do this both before and after I modify the style. Okay. Mod before I modify the T button style. So if I run this code, Okay, what's wrong with that? Oh, okay. There's the closing bracket there and there. So what you can see here is that first TK default font was printed out, then Vardana 18 underline was printed out. Okay, the reason for this is that this is the default font. So before I made any changes, T button, the option font had this value. And after I changed it to Vardana 18 underline, and then I printed out the value. I looked it up. I looked up what is the value of the font option in the T button style. Then it gave me the new updated value. Okay. So it's a pretty useful function and it can come in, come in real handy. All right. So with this, I think we're pretty much done. Just one more thing I want to clarify that pretty much every widget, okay. Every widget has a counterpart, a counterpart style. So T button, sorry, button has T button as a style label has t label as a style and then there's t ready button and t check button and so on okay if you are confused about this though i have a link to my website in the description below and it has a list of all the styles for every single widget okay so just go check that out and you can find all the code over there and one or two extra details some extra boring details you know long lists of tables and stuff long lists of styles you can find all that there and I do advise you guys to watch the next video. It's really important if, you know, like it's really important to kind of complete the concept of team to take inter. While style is pretty cool and you should definitely be using it in, you know, if you're creating some proper GUI applications with TTK and take inter, I think you might find teams pretty handy and pretty useful too, pretty convenient because there are entire pre-built teams that you can actually download for TTK and just, you know, apply them. And you know, you're, you're done. Just apply the theme. And if you like their look, just look at the preview for that theme. If you like it, just apply it. And there you go. You have the updated look for all of your widgets. There are even some pre-built themes. Okay. There are even some uh, OS specific themes and that's all pretty handy, honestly. So I do advise you go check that out and you'll learn a lot over there. All right. So with that, let's end this video and I hope you guys subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, leave some feedback. Let me know if there's something you guys want to see. All right. So I'll, you know, try to do that. Otherwise I'll see you guys in the next video.